We've got the Amphibio Multi outside. And look at the size of this coil from Nocta Macro. This thing's massive. Uh, this is uh, the largest coil that they have uh, in their arsenal for the Amphibio. Um, it's a great design. It's actually got the blunt end, which I really, really like. Um, it does add a little bit of weight to the Amphibio, but um, you know, and these are the things you guys need to consider when you purchase these big coils. I mean, this unit runs hot, and that's just with the 11-inch coil. You throw this jackpot on there, it's picking up more interference, it can see more under the coil. This would be great in, um, like with the pattern I have for the Amphibio, I use high discrimination. You've seen that. That works absolutely fabulous for me, and I've worked uh, other units with the same sort of discrimination pattern as um, you've seen on the Amphibio here with other units. So if I use that, it tends to keep things a little bit more controlled, a little bit more quieter. I'm not picking up all the chirps from all the other signals and the trash. I've already weeded the trash out with the discrimination system. So all I'm listening for are good repetitive signals. And that's where this can come into play. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this with a big open pattern. It's just gonna, it's just gonna cause too much chatter. You'd almost have to lower your gain, which as I said, it's discriminate, it's the sensitivity on the Amphibio. You'd have to lower your gain to a level where you're going to lose depth. It, it kind of contradicts the fact of having a big coil. You, you want to run the big coil at the same settings as you run the 11 inch to be able to get an increase in depth from the stock to the big coil. So if you gotta lower your gain, lower your sensitivity, what's the point getting the big coil? You may as well run the small one at the higher gain. Make sense? The only way to offset that is, as I said, use higher discrimination on this, and sometimes you just gotta cherry pick the signals you want. Great for farm fields. Even just, even just open grass areas, like just large stretches of fields. Stick this on, you'll get less interference. There's, there's less you know, interference in the air in these big fields unless you got electrical wires over top of you and just run this sucker. But that's awesome. I got this from Nocta. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna get me, I, I think there's another one that's kind of a little bit smaller than this one, but I love the big coils. I love them. They, they retain their sensitivity to very, very small silver coins in that. If this will pick up like a half dime at 10 inches, which another large coil did, or deeper, why not use it, right? Other guys are going to walk over those sorts of targets. You're going to find them with that. So that's a good little addition with your Amphibio. Uh, the other coil too is this little puppy right here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the small coils, but I will tell you, I found the uh, 11 inch on the Amphibio and also possibly on the Simplex. I got the Simplex in the mail. That's coming with the brand new uh, 12 and a half by 13 and a half inch coil. Um, I find that this also picks up a lot of deep iron. It, it has a bit of a, it has some trouble really weeding out the deep iron, but then again, so do other units. I've had the E-Track that, you know, that unfortunately I'm digging deep iron with that too sometimes it's just been in the ground so so long and the halo that it creates I mean the detector sees that and goes oh yeah okay there might be something really good here and it signals off so um, I find that the nine this small one here I actually tried it twice uh, the last couple of days I can really crank up my gain to about 90 on this coil and get some really good solid depth and it tends to avoid the deep iron it just doesn't see that deep deep stuff down there I can still get really good depth on coin size targets on this but it just has it's just less responsive to the deep iron so it's kind of a good little compromise compared to your 11 inch stock and I'm sure on the Amphibio, it would work the same on the Amphibio as well as the Simplex and the other uh, units as well. So you could use this, not necessarily just in trashy areas, but just in general searching and just crank your gain on your unit. And you're still going to get some pretty serious depth with this one. So those are the two, that one and that one. And um, one other thing as well, with the Amphibio, actually I was out for a seven, eight hour hunt on the fa 
I used the five kilohertz. I was out for about seven, eight hours with a group. The battery had died. And I was kind of like, okay, well, what, like, what do I do now, right? I, I mean, this thing's chargeable. So you plug it in and get a good charge on it. I charge these things. Every time I finish a dig, I plug it in, top it up. Every time, I, it doesn't matter how long the dig is, I top it up. And just before I leave, I unplug it, stick it in the vehicle, and I'm gone. So I'm always keeping it top notch and the battery uh, full. But I ran out, and I'm like, oh, geez, what am I going to do with that? So anyway, I ended up getting one of these from Nocta Macro. And what this does is I've never used it yet because when I went out and it ran out of the battery, I didn't have this in the car. So uh, this fits underneath the arm cup. So I'm going to see if I can hold this for you. There's a bit of a slot there, so this fits underneath. It fits underneath right there, and it screws on, and the cord there screws on to uh, behind the box here. And you can put four double A's in here and continue hunting. So it's just an addition to the unit. It, it's light, it doesn't add a lot of weight. I mean, four double A's aren't that heavy, but I gotta keep this in the Jeep from now on and uh, it's great to have as a backup on long hunts and that. But yeah, that just slides right in there and plugs in, it's sweet. So I got that and uh, what else? I got the shovel here too, this shovel's just killer. Look at the blade on this sucker. And this thing would, this thing's scary. Look at it, look at the teeth on that, super sharp, welds awesome. I was a little skeptical on it. I'm, you know, I, I do have a bunch of shovels and I ended up picking up this, this one from Nocta as well. I wasn't sure about this and this part right here. I mean, anytime you have these little breakdowns here, that creates a, a weakness. There's a weakness in here, but it's not weak by any means. And the reason it's not is because it's stainless steel. This stuff is strong and I tell you, it goes dead, like for the majority of it, I mean, depending on the height, you're down here, you still have another couple, maybe an inch, inch and a quarter here. So you have a lot of leverage still in the bottom shaft and that's what's gonna give you your strength. But the fact that it's stainless steel, that's not gonna break even with this option. So they've really kind of thought through this really well. Um, it's great to have it collapsible. The good thing is as well is you don't need to go out, I mean, the shovels on the market are what, 31 inch, 36 inch, and that's it. I mean, personally for me, I would probably love about a 34 inch uh, shovel or a, a spade as I'd like to say. Um, but I mean, that's custom, right? But not like this. I mean, I could pretty much get any height I wanted that's gonna suit me. And the blade, just killer. This thing's solid. Look at the thickness of that too. Like it's, it's, it's built like a tank. Man, that's awesome. Look at the weld too. I've seen that weld as well on uh, the market around. This is all welded too. Let's turn it over. Here's the weld on the top. Nice depth gauge. God, I hope you're not digging a hole that deep, but who knows? A lot of those guys in the US on those Civil War camps, sure. You know what I mean? But your average place, you're not gonna be digging that deep. And then it's got uh, just some numbers on the back end, whether you use them or not, I'm not sure. But yeah, really nice. It's just, it's it's really nice done. Bottle openers on the ends. Man, we all need that in the field after a hot day of digging. But yeah, that's pretty sweet. So anyway, uh, I thought I'd show you those things. And why I got you, because I know you're just dying to watch a different video, because this one's going, making you fall asleep here. Um, Nocta Amphibio Multi, uh, five kilohertz, as you can see, look at this. The large sense, 95% um, are uh, hit, uh, hitting those numbers there. 54, 58, 64, 69. So you could say I get about 10 to 20 coins of each one of these and percentage wise, look at the next one, Canadian large sense, 100%. So large scent, consistency at 95%, you're looking at those numbers, 100% of all the large scents I scanned hit with those numbers. So I know that I'm gonna use those and so on. I'll let you guys have a gander at that. And then the second page I have 
some settings if you guys are interested. These are specifically for Canadian coins. I have uh, American as well, but there you go. You got the Silver Cash program, the Colonial Trail. That one's focused on Colonial Coppers. That one is Silver Coins Old. The General Bank is pretty much all of the other older coins, including the Colonial and the Silver Cash uh, programs, all combined into one. But if you guys want copies of these, let me know, and I can send them to you uh, through email. Digging for Life team at Outlook.com.